Hello, welcome to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation Tutorial Series. Now we are talking about data types and particularly in this video we will talk about extended data types or in short form it also called EDT. You already know that in our previous videos we already discussed about what is data type and types of data types and in our previous videos we already discussed about primitive data types and now in this particular video we will talk about user defined data type or specifically we can say that extended data type if you don't know what is data types and what is primitive data type then you can see our previous videos there already i discussed about the primitive data types and how to write code using primitive data types now in this video we will talk about extended data type first we will understand that what is extended data type and what is the benefits of extended data types why we should use all these things we will discuss and after that we will move to the practical session and we will create extended data type and we will also write code for those particular extended data types so without wasting time so let's start understanding what is extended data type all right as you can see in this particular slide that first point is saying that extended data types or edts are user defined data types so you already know that this is a user defined data types and based on the primitive data types for example boolean integer real string dates and also it uses the composite data type container you can also use the base edts on the other edts what is what does it actually means so to create extended data type we take the help of the primitive data types also takes the composite data types helps of the composite data types also sometimes we create edits based on the edits which are already present so from the first point we can easily say that extended data types created based on the primitive data types okay to understand how edit created so first you have to create a project then on the on the project you have to right click and after that you have to click on the add and then if you we'll click on the new item then one window will open and you can see that this particular window will open and from the dynamics 365 items in the data type section you can see various types of edits are there for example base enum is there and with this particular base enum you can also create edit enum also you can see that date is there edit date so when we'll click on this one edit will be created and this edit will be will be created but the primitive data type in the base of this particular data type will be date in the same way you can see that edit we can create edit in the same way you can see that guid is there primitive data type integer is there integer 64 bit is there real is there string is there time is there date utc date time is there date is there enum is there and container also there so with these all types of primitive data type we can create our edit so this is a edit but the base type is container this is also a edit but base type is date or based on date we are creating the edit based on the enum we are creating the edit extended data type and in the below section you can see you have to give the name of that edit and after that you can add that particular edit in your project so based on the standard naming convention you have to give the name and then you can add so for example if you want to if you have a employee table if you want to create an employee table and if you want to add employee name as a column then my suggestion will be create the edit string and give the name employee name and before that you can see that one prefix is there answer for example you are working for the answer private limited this is a company this is an organization so that's why 
we are using the prefix as Ansari. If you are working for any other company, then use that prefix before your standard object name or edit name. And after that, you can use your edit name. So I want to create a field in my employee table and the field name will be employee name. That is why I am giving the name of the edit as Ansari employee name. And after that, you can add by clicking on the add button, you can add your item or edit in your project. So I hope it's clear how the base primitive data type is used in creating the extended data type. Okay, now we'll move to the next point. The next point is saying that this feature is not implemented as a language construct. So what does it actually mean language construct? So let's understand first this particular sentence. The statement this feature is not implemented as a language language construct means that extended data types or EDDs in Dynamics 365 financial operations are not a fundamental or built in part of the programming language itself. Instead, they are a feature implemented at a higher level within the application framework. In other words, EDTs are not a core element of programming language, X++ programming language such as variables or loops or if else statements, but rather a feature provided by the Dynamics 365 FO development environment and they are defined and managed within the FO development tools and typically through the application object tree or the development ID that means integrated development environment uh, which is Visual Studio and they are used to create custom data types or structures. This distinction is important because language constructs are fundamental elements of a programming language while edits are specific to the uh, D365 FNO application and are used to enhance the data management and customization within the context of the Dynamics 365 FNO platform. They allow developers to define custom data types and use them in variable and field declaration, but they are not a part of the core syntax of the programming language used for the D365 FNO development. So I hope now the point is clear for you. This feature is not implemented as a language construct. EDTs are defined in the application object tree. So I'll show you when I'll open the Visual Studio, I'll show you in EDTs which is already present and I'll also create new edit to show the implementation. The third point is saying that an EDT is a primitive data type, sorry, container with a supplementary name or some additional properties. So one may ask that EDT is created based on the primitive data types. So what is the difference between the EDTs and uh, this primitive data type? It's true that EDT is a, a primitive data type but with a supplementary name or some additional properties. So EDT have some additional properties or name properties that we can use for example you can create a new edit called name and the base of that edit will be a string so a string is a primitive data type but we can create an edit with the name we can give the name as a name and the base of it will be the string which is a primitive data type therefore you can use the new edit in a variable and a field declaration in the development environment okay i hope it's clear when i'll show you practical example it will be more clear now we'll talk about benefits of extended data type so let's start in this slide you can see that in the first point it is saying that code is easier to read because variable have a meaningful data types for example name instead of string so let's try to understand this point in depth as you can see in this slide it is talking about the readability okay so in the first point it is also saying that code is easier to read so means readability 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 is better 
for the EDT. Okay, using the descriptive EDT scan enhance code readability. For instance, or for example, instead of using a generic string data types for a field that represent postal codes, you can create an EDT with the name postal code to make your code more self-explanatory. For example, you can create a variable like str code but when you will create a edt with the name postal code that time you can use the data type as a postal code directly okay and after that you can create the variable name as a postal code and you have to give the semicolon after that so you can easily see with this two particular line that this one gives the more readability or more more usefulness with compared to the first line of code so i hope now it's clear how the edt improves the readability now we'll go to the next point now in the second point you can see the properties you set for an edt are used by all instances of that type which reduces the work and promotes the consistency for example account number so account for account number you can create an edt like account num data type directly having the same properties throughout the system okay so now let's explain it how it reduces the work and how it promotes the consistency you can see that reusability point here edt can be reused in multiple tables and fields okay so when we create the tables you can uh, there can have a multiple tables and that particular field can be used in multiple tables okay and the properties and the features will be used on different table but it will be a universal also you can think like that a particular account number can be used in multiple tables if the account number will be a single data type so it will be useful um, to create a table because we have not we don't have to create the fields or columns for that particular table again and again but we can use that particular account number edt for multiple tables so this is this will be useful and the reusability will be better in case of edt it also reduces the redundancy and the simplifying the data management also when you make changes to an edt those changes are automatically applied whenever the edt is used so that's why reusability uh, is important also the edt is important in case of reusability so we must use the edt so in case of reusability we should not use the primitive data type we always prefer where we should always prefer the edt when you are working on real world project now we'll discuss about the third point the third point is saying that you can create hierarchies of edts inheriting the properties that are appropriate from the parent and changing the other properties for example the item code data type is used as the basis of the markup item code and price discount item code data type so in case of edits you can use the hierarchies of edits or you can extend the one edit to create another edit so in the first point we already discussed about this you can also use the base edit on other edit so for example we have a edit you can inherit that edit and you can create another edit or you can uh, add some extra properties you can add some extra properties or you can change some properties uh, so this will be the hierarchy from one edt you can create another edt based on your requirement so that's why it will be useful for you to use the edt in your in your code so if you'll use the edt then you can inherit the properties uh, from the base edt okay if you use the edt so the data inconsistency will not happen 
so the da your data will be consistent so now we'll explain this point as you can see in this third point data consistency edd helps to enforce the consistent data formats and validation rule across various tables and fields for example you can create an edd for an email address to ensure that all the fields in your application adhere to the same format on validation rule so if you'll apply uh, this kind of validations over the um, particular over the fields then data inconsistency will not happen okay i hope now it's clear that what is edt and benefits of edt and also you understood that why we should use edt in our project so i hope i discussed lot of thing here lots of thing here if we'll move to the practical part in the same video the video will be longer so i'll create the edt and explain the practical example in the next video it will be more useful for you so thanks for watching this video take care bye bye see you in the next one